Good morning, everybody, and happy Monday. Welcome to the Sparrow Quilt Company Stash Busters series. My name is Brady, and I am really excited to be working on the Undone Quilt today. Hopefully you can see it quite well. Uh, this is the quilt that we've been working on the past two sessions. Uh, like I said, it is called Undone, and you can find that at sparrowquiltco.com. It may look really tricky and really hard, but let me reassure you that it is super, super simple. And I'm going to show you today exactly how to piece these blocks. At least we're going to start on the colored portion of the quilt down in the corners. And uh, to be honest, it is a nine patch. Ah, Matt's just telling me to slow down. Let's wait for some people to get here, shall we? So... While we're waiting, why don't you tell me where you're all watching from and how is the weather in your area? We're in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and our weather is finally beautiful. It seems uh, with the end of February approaching that our weather is finally starting to smarten up. It was more of a winter like out of our childhood this year. It was really, really cold for extended periods of time. And let's be honest, that's what winter in northern Alberta is all about. But um, it, I guess it took us all by surprise. We've been spoiled these past few years. But I always enjoy Mondays. I've really tried to uh, change my thinking about Mondays. I used to really hate them because it meant the end of the weekend and back to work and back to school. And then I realized when everybody goes back to school, the house is so quiet. And you can clean it and it might actually stay that way for a few minutes anyways. So that's a good thing. As you can see, we are streaming from home again. We are finding that it is much easier to uh, do our videos at home. There's much less interruption and a lot less distraction. Although I love seeing all my customers. It's always funny when I'm in the middle of a video and someone's standing off in the corner waving. <laughs> They're so excited to see that we do a show now uh, at the shop. So it's always fun to touch base. Oh, yeah. So we, in anticipation for these quilt blocks that we'll be working on in this quilt for Undone, we did a couple of uh, quilt block studio tutorials where we focused specifically on a nine patch and how to piece that. And we also did a double disappearing nine patch. So there's some little hints about what we'll be doing in a few minutes here as well. And if you just want short and sweet, get to the point, why does she talk so much? Those are going to be the tutorials that you're looking for. If you're watching this Stash Buster series, you've probably come to notice that it's a little bit more lengthy. We stream for 90 minutes each Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, starting at 10.30 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And I just treat it as more of a talk show. It is kind of casual and fun, and we give away fun prizes and... Um, yeah, I just keep you up to date on the family and the kids and all that good stuff. But if you want something that's a little more direct and straight to the point, those tutorials, which you can find on YouTube, will be more your speed. So go ahead and check those out there on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss any of our new videos or tutorials. Now, the... Um, as you may or may not know, we have been doing this Stash Buster series since the beginning of January, and we began it as an effort to help quilters use up what they already have. I am just as guilty as uh, most by accumulating fabric and never touching it again. I just absolutely have to have it, have to have it. And then it goes into my uh, beautiful cupboard and becomes more like home decor. And my cupboard got to the point where... I couldn't even see half the things that were in there, so I did a big D stashing, and I sold off a bunch of my personal stash, just things that um, maybe I didn't love as much anymore, and I just kind of let some stuff go. And if you find that you are in that position as well, you know, donate it to a charity or pass those blocks that you're never going to finish on to someone else. Give them new life. Free that clutter out of your home and out of your mind, and just let it go. Just let it go, because some of those older fabrics... They're not current anymore. They're not trendy anymore. And you probably don't love them anymore. So why keep them in your home and um, have this guilt? I don't know about you, but for me, it's guilt. Like this, this underlying, geez, I need to get back to that. I need to get back to that. So if I just break up with it and let it move along and let it have a new life with another quilter, then that frees up my mind to do other things. So I hope you will take that advice and help yourself kind of let go of some of your stash. <clears throat> 
Anyways, on our website at sparrowquiltgo.com is where you're going to find the free download for this pattern undone. <clears throat> You're just going to put your email address into the little field there, and we will send you an email with the pattern attached. But you can also find a Stash Buster section on the website where you will find all the previous patterns and tutorials that we have done, and you can also uh, find any of the products that we've used in those videos and learn more about them. And we also do all of this on Facebook, so if that is your uh, platform of preference, you can find us there. And please like our business page as well so that you're always up to date on what's going on. Pardon me. Do we have any questions yet, Maddie? I got Maddie behind the camera helping me out today. Are we good to kind of get going? Okay. All right, so I just want to quickly go over all our fabric requirements again. We kind of fragmented the beginning of this um, quilt tutorial. Last Wednesday, we had uh, a break on some of our equipment, and the video was terrible, so we just ditched it. You are not going to find a video one, no matter how hard you look. You're going to start with video two for the undone quilt. But because we lost that beginning, I want to go over those requirements with you, okay? So in order to make... The um, dark blocks, I've got one here behind me, these here, I'm going to lay that out right here so you can see it. In order to make those blocks, you are going to need um, 40 red 5 inch squares and that is the bright red. You're also going to need 40 dark grey 5 inch squares. For uh, in black, you're going to need 10 5 inch squares and you're also going to need 10 7 inch squares. Okay, both of those. The maroon, you are going to need, or burgundy, 40 7 inch squares. Now, in order to make the lighter squares, and that's this block here. You are going to require six light gray, 24 uh, white and gray print, and another 24 of a second white and gray print. Uh, that's fairly uh, tone on tone, so if you just wanted to do a total of 54 seven inch squares there, you could do that as well, but we have just split it up based on how much fabric we had available. We wanted to mix it up a little bit. So today we're gonna start with this block here, and this is our uh, double disappearing nine patch. Like I said, it is really, really simple, and I think you're gonna find that it's no trouble at all to make it, although the quilt itself looks quite tricky. So just let me clear all this stuff away, and then we will lay out our first block to get piecing. We probably won't even touch these grays today, so let's just set them aside. And for now, we'll also set aside are seven inch squares in the black and maroon. All right, so to begin, I'm gonna lay out a black in the center. And the bright red is gonna be our four outer corners. And then our dark gray, the five inch squares of dark gray are gonna be everything that's left. Now you can see how simple this is, right? I know you can do it. So what I like to do is I sew together two squares from each row and then I'll lay them back out again to make sure that I have myself arranged properly. Uh, with this fruit fly brain of mine, I really have to keep myself on track with little checkpoints. And I am going to uh, sew these with right sides together and with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now that you're all here, I was thinking today that I would like to give away one of my little uh, bobbin 
holder thingies. This is an ever sewn um, bobbin holder and it's in my favorite color. So I thought I would like to give away one of those. So you guys know the drill. You know that you have to share this video here on Facebook in order to qualify for that prize. And we'll give that away at the end of the day. And I also want to know today, what's your favorite color? I just told you mine. I love that uh, bright kind of robin's egg blue or aqua, maybe that's called. We were doing some inventory at the shop the other day and holy moly do I have a lot of fabric in that color and a lot in like the minty green. You can tell what my favorite colors are. I seem to get a lot of those. We had to really beef up on the reds and oranges because I barely have any of those at all. Hopefully you know how to share a video on Facebook. If not, you're just going to look below the video and you're going to see three options. One is to like, one is to comment, and one is to share. So just go ahead and click that video, uh, that share button, and that's how you will share. Now I'm chain piecing here. It saves on thread and it's nice and quick. So when I'm done all three pieces. I'll just cut them all apart. And I'm going to put them back in place like I told you I would so that I don't lose track of what I'm up to. Making sure the black is in the center and that the grays are in the middle. And now I'm just going to attach that last. Oh, so I'll attach these last square in each little row. And if you're just joining us today, we are working on the undone quilt pattern, which you can see hanging behind me. We're doing this in a different colorway today with reds and uh, blacks and grays. I'm gonna create a uh, buffalo plaid type of look. So I'm really looking forward to this one. I love plaid. If you want to follow along in the fun and join us in piecing this quilt pattern, you're going to visit us at sparrowquiltco.com so that you can get your free download. And that's only available while we're doing these tutorials. Once we move on to the next quilt, it will be replaced with the next pattern. Have I ever done a disappearing nine patch? I have, and I'm going to show you how to do one shortly. Once we get this nine patch together, I'll show you how we make it disappear. And you can also check out our uh, video there on YouTube. We have nine patch and we have a double disappearing nine patch and we'll also add just the disappearing nine patch uh, very soon. Who knew there were so many kinds of disappearing nine patch? Okay, so I'm going to lay these all out again. I've never even heard of a disappearing pinwheel. That's cool, Terry. I'm going to have to look that one up. All right, so the first seam that I sewed, I went from here down and I did that on all three rows. I started here and I went down. When I did this second uh, square onto the other two, I started here and I sewed my way up. So one of my seams went this way and the other one went this way. It's not as crucial in small pieces of fabric like this, but especially if you were sewing long strips, you always want to alternate your, your direction of sewing and that will help keep your project more square. If you do all your seams in the same direction, what you'll notice is that it starts to kind of bow. And um, I don't know how to stop that other than doing this alternating of direction of sewing. So I do recommend that you do that if possible. Now we need to press these and I am going to press everything towards my dark grays. So in this row here, my seams will point in. 
in this row here, my seams will point out. And again, with the bottom row, they're going to point towards the dark gray. And that will allow my seams to nest really nicely when I go to join all these rows together. Okay, so this top row, I'm going to push, press my seams towards the dark gray. So these two seam allowances are going to be pointed in this way. This row here, again, we're going to go to the dark gray. So our seam allowances are going to point out. And on this bottom row, they're going to point in. And when I join them, they will have a really nice nesting of the seams. I'm just going to take a moment now and do my pressing. Now, I know you can't see what I'm up to over here, but I am first I press on the um, on the thread with the fabric closed. So I would press it with my gray fabric up and I just press along that thread there and it just sets it nicely into the fabric and then I open it up and I will press it once more so that the top is nice and flat and that my seam is pressing towards the gray. I really do recommend piecing with a nice um, thin piecing thread. My preference is a 50 weight. And that just takes up less room in our seam allowance. All right, there's our first row. Seams are pressed towards the dark gray. And again, we'll press to the dark gray on this one, but that is pointing the seams outward towards the outside of the block. So if you're just joining us and you want to qualify for my fun prize of a bobbin uh, holder, you're going to share this video, please, right here on Facebook, if that's where you're watching. And that will qualify you to win that prize, which we'll give away at the end of the video here. And also, I want to know today what your favorite color is. I'm sure between us all, we can come up with a rainbow. And do you find yourself always making quilts in that same colorway? It's funny to me when people come into the shop because they're always telling me how they have so many quilts in their favorite colors and they find it really hard sometimes to make quilts for others when they choose the fabric because it's not their favorite color. And I can relate to that so very strongly. I have to love my fabrics if I'm working on a project. So now we're ready to take this row, put it right sides together with this row. And I'm going to dig out my fork pins for this because I want to make sure that my seams are nesting into each other well. So I'm going to turn this on its side a little bit and hopefully you can see how this seam here is pointing to the left and my top seam is pointing to the right. And I just want to nestle those into one another so that they are touching. And then I'm going to pin this with my fork pins. Now I understand that some of you are not comfortable sewing over pins and that is fine. If you want to pin until it comes close to the needle and then pull your pin, you are absolutely welcome to do so. This is your fabric and your quilt and I want you to do what you are comfortable with, okay? I like to just slow down and kind of walk over the pins while I'm sewing, but I know that there are lots of quilters who've had a bad experience and they just don't want to sew over pins and I, I totally respect that. All right. So there you can see I'm all lined up and I am ready to sew. I'm really noticing that this linen is quite uh, unravely. So just something to keep in mind. I know I was raving about linen last week and how much I loved it in my quilts, but just a observation that I thought I would share with you. And of course we are sewing with a scant quarter inch. I 
I did read a comment a few weeks ago from a quilter who says that she always uses a half an inch and because she just doesn't feel that the quarter is adequate. So there, well, you'd have to buy a whole bunch of extra fabric to make sure you had enough. Made me wonder if she just had a default number that she added on as far as um, additional fabric, because you would certainly need more. Now we'll lay this back out again. And you can see how nicely my corners lined up there. And now I'm going to bring this and put it right sides facing that bottom row. And again, I'm going to pin as I planned my seams to go in opposite directions so that they fit together beautifully. And I just want to make sure that they're touching inside the seam there. It's a little bit harder with the dark fabrics. You can't see it as well. Almost got it. All right, just let those touch and then give it a pin. And if you're really worried about keeping things straight, you could also pin at each corner. I just take my time. I slow down when I get close to the end there and make sure that things are lined up as well as I can get them to. There we go. All right, we are getting close to the end of this nine patch and then I can show you how we're gonna make it disappear. So today I'm sewing on my uh, little Ever Sewn Sparrow 25. I just love this little machine. I'm really looking forward to getting the Sparrow 30 because it's rose gold. Maybe that's my second favorite color. But I do find them to be sturdy little machines. All right. Now, just a reminder, have you shared this video so that you can uh, qualify to win one of those bobbin holder prizes? I don't know about you, but my drawer is a mess. And so I was so excited to bring this home the other day and actually get my bobbins into it because they just roll around all over the place and they unwind and it makes you a little bit crazy. Well, it makes me a little bit crazy. I shouldn't assume that it makes you crazy too. Oh, sure. All right. So there is my finished nine patch. And in just a moment, I'll show you how we're going to make that disappear. But first, I'm going to go over the fabric requirements one more time, just so that everybody can be up to speed. Oops. All right. So to make the um, the darker nine patch or disappearing nine patches, we are going to need a total of 10 seven inch black squares. Also in black, we are going to need 10 five inch squares. We're going to need 40 burgundy seven inch squares. And in the um, dark gray, we're gonna use 40 five inch squares. And in the bright red, we're gonna need another 40 five inch squares. In order to make the lighter disappearing nine patches, which look like this, we are going to need a total of 54 seven inch squares. Us personally for this quilt, we went with 24 of the gray with white print. We've got six of the light gray linen and another 24 of the gray with white print. If you want to make the colorway that you see behind me, we have those on the website. Uh, the quilt kit is ready to go. Sheila was working hard all last week and this morning to get those all ready for you. So you can find those at sparrowquiltco.com. All right. Now to make this uh, darker disappearing nine patches, to begin, we're going to start with the five inch squares. And you can see here how I've already pieced that. 
If you missed that just a moment ago, I will be doing it again in a minute. How to piece a nine patch, but you can also find our tutorial on YouTube on how to piece a nine patch block. Now I am going to press this block so that it lays nice and flat before I go ahead and cut it up. Now at this point, the direction you um, press the seams, I'm going to press them out. I'm going to press this one up and this one down, but it really doesn't matter which direction you go with it. So if you're looking for that pattern, the undone quilt pattern, you can find that at sparrowquiltco.com. And in the Stash Buster section on the website there, you can find all our previous tutorials and <clears throat> quilt patterns. We got a whole little section there devoted just to the Stash Busters. But you can also find us on YouTube. And you can just scroll through our Facebook page as well and find everything there. Now I really, really like to see all the quilts that you're making out of our patterns. Terry Pepper sent me a picture this morning of her houndstooth quilt that she uh, whipped up at retreat and she put all the blocks together this morning. She did a totally different layout than uh, the houndstooth that I did. She took all her points of the houndstooth and joined them at the center so it created this really neat star and then it created a secondary pattern of another star so make sure you check that out on our Facebook page so you can see how Terry laid hers out a little bit different than mine and she really made it her own which is awesome all right are you ready for the disappearing part now we're going to need to do some slicing and dicing so we're going to need our ruler and our rotary cutter So I am now going to cut down the center of this block and I'm also going to cut across the center on the horizontal. Uh, my blocks in the middle there should measure about four and a half. Pretty close, maybe a little bit small. Maybe I had a fat quarter inch today. That's okay. So in order to cut down the center, I need to line up at the two and a quarter mark. So I'm gonna use my ruler I'm going to have to come at it this way. I got the camera in my way over here. I want to make sure that I'm fairly square as well. So you can see I am using a line on my ruler and I'm lining it up with my seam that's in the block. And that is showing me how uh, square I am being. And then I've got the two and a quarter mark lined up with this vertical line. Now that I've got that in place, I am going to go ahead and cut down the center here. And I don't want to move those. I want to keep them as still as I can. So I'm moving my ruler very carefully. Now, I need to do the same thing, but on the horizontal. So I'm going to, again, line up my two and a quarter mark along this seam. And I also want to find a seam that is going on the vertical to make sure that I am nice and square. And it looks really good. One, two, and a quarter. We're always going to check it twice so that we only have to cut it once. That way there's no tears when we mess it up. All right. So now this is just your basic disappearing nine patch. Pretty cool, right? So what I have seen done with disappearing nine patch in the past is you take two of the squares and you twist them and then you can put it together like that. But we are gonna take this one step further 
And we're going to bring in those seven inch blocks now that we set aside a few moments ago. These are going to become the outer corners. Show the full block. Oh, that we're about to make. And we're going to turn it in to this. And then we're going to slice this a second time. And that's when it becomes the double disappearing nine patch. All right, so now we need to bring over our maroons and a black for the center. And those are in the seven inch size. All right. So again, we're going to piece a nine patch, but those outer corners are uh, a pieced block rather than just a solid fabric. The maroons will go in all the leftover spaces. I'm trying to hold on to this little thread. I should just ditch it. Okay, so there now you can see it does. Yes, yep. We're gonna piece. Uh... Oh, so Matt's just saying there's a question where uh, is this? Are the, does this quilt end up on point? And you can see here that yes, all these squares are on point. So we will be uh, slicing a bunch on the diagonal a little bit later as well. All right, so that is our next nine patch. And like I did before, I'm going to place this block on top of that one. And I'm going to sew all of these with right sides together and my scant quarter inch seam. And I've preached this at you before, but just a reminder to sew with your seams on top so that you can control the direction of them. And that way you can sew them down and they'll stay where you want them to. All right, guys, have you shared this video? I'm gonna be entered for the prize today, which is my cool little bobbin holder. And you can also have it in green if you like. Maybe your favorite color isn't blue like mine and that's okay. We can still be friends. Oh, Jean says that the overhead view is very, very helpful. And I'm glad to hear that. We are always tweaking and seeing how we can do things better. So I appreciate your comment, Jean. All right, this is shuffling a little bit. So I'm gonna stop and make sure my corner is lined up before I sew it go. No seams on this one, so it doesn't matter. And here's our last one for this block. Oh, okay. So there's a comment that there's not yardage requirements. I think the first time Sheila did this, she did it completely scrappy. So she wasn't using yardage right off the bolt. Um, and we can, hopefully you can see the scrappy one here behind me. We'll have to do sort of a summary and include the yardage there for those of you that want to do it in um, a more specific color way. I know Sheila has that information because she made up these kits. So we'll see if we can get that added in for you folks. All right. So we will separate all of these chain pieced blocks and 
Oh, nice job, Cheryl. Cheryl says she's almost finished quilting her. Oh, she's finished. Cheryl is one of our more local gals, and she brings her phone in and shows me pictures all the time. Good for you, Cheryl. I'm happy to hear that. I'll be looking forward to seeing that one. Send me a picture unless you're going to come in and show me. All right. I have got these arranged correctly. I am now going to press. Uh, I am going to press this one into the center because it will be easier simply because there's no seams in the center. So you see how that seam allowance wants to go to the center anyway, so let's just let it. On this middle row, I will press towards the outside. So I guess really what I'm doing is pressing towards my maroon fabric uh, in all the rows. And I'll just, I'll sew first and then I will press. So next I'm going to bring these and put those right sides facing. And again, we're going to do our quarter inch seam allowance or scant quarter inch. Get these all lined up. And just a reminder that this time to sew up. The first time we sewed down, next time we're going to sew up. We want to alternate the direction of sewing to make sure that things stay nice and square. And again, I'm going to put them with my pieced block on top so that my seams can be controlled. Now you probably noticed that we're sewing from home today, so I don't have as many of my nifty gadgets at home. I don't have my handy dandy pressing pad and I don't have my fancy iron either, but I'll be bringing those things home. But one thing I did want to show, Alberta, if you're watching, there's my little four patch um, pin cushion. I was telling Alberta how I separate my pins in my four patch and it is well used. It is abused. In fact, that might be a... Uh, How's that? So I pieced four patches and I kind of separate my pins into the different four patches. Not that it matters, but it just makes it easier to find them down the road when I go to use them. And just, huh? Okay, so there I just have um, a straight pin. Most of them are straight, some of them are not. And here I have my fork pins. And over here I usually keep these finer glass head ones. You can see some of them have wandered around. And I just stuffed this thing silly with rice or something like that. And I finished off the uh, center with a button. But you have to be careful not to push them through too far. I passed this to Matt the other day and there was pins poking out the bottom. So he poked his hand. But uh, yeah, just be careful when you're using that. It's just a fun, easy little pin cushion that you can make as well. And I used some of my favorite fabrics for that. All right, on to the next one. Absolutely. Gwen is asking, can you leave the squares in their chain piecing so to keep them in order? And that would absolutely work. If you want to do more of an assembly line and just... Uh, you know that you're going to be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That would work for sure. I have to do one at a time so I don't uh, lose track of what I'm what I'm up to. Unless it's super simplified and then I can keep track of it. But like I admitted before, this fruit fly brain of mine sometimes does not keep track of everything the way it should. So just little things can help you stay more organized. I'm really um, wanting to get a design wall so that I can kind of show things on display and lay it out as I go. Sorry? Mm. Do any of you use a design wall? I'd love to hear what kind you have and how you like it. I've seen that there's a couple of different ones out there. I need one that's freestanding. I don't want to mark up the walls here in the house. I mean, I could just pin up some batting or flannel or uh, someone even told me a picnic 
blanket or a, a tablecloth has kind of flannel on the back and it can be rolled up, which is a, absolutely a great idea, but I can't mark up the walls in the house here. So I need something that is freestanding, maybe on a frame. So like I said, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you use and how much you like it. My friend Sandra had one at retreat last year that I really liked. It was big. All right. So there you can see uh, the three rows that we're going to sew together and that will become my uh, disappearing nine patch block. And then I'm going to slice it again. I just want to point out you want to make sure that your black squares are in the center. You don't want to accidentally get those turned around. Someone's at the door. Good thing Maddie's here. All right, so now I'm just going to bring this and put it right sides facing. Oh, let's press these first, shall we? So see how this top row is, um, the seams are pointing towards the center block. We're just going to keep it that way. And here I'm going to press these towards the outside. See, I'm so nosy. I'm trying to hear what's going on down there. It's really none of my business, but... Terrible being this nosy. All right, so set that seam first and then open it up and press it from the right side. Who is that? Someone just came to the door selling steak and seafood and Matt told them he's a vegetarian. To Matt's pretty sure he was eyeballing his belly in doubt. <laughs> I don't know. Going door to door selling meat. I'm not sure I'm down. Just something about buying meat at a reputable place, hey? Okay. So there... Oh, doesn't it look better once it's pressed? And remember, those black squares to the inside. And this time we are pressing towards the maroon block, which is going to be away from center. To both sides. Now, my light on my iron is flashing at me here which means that it is no longer on. So give me a second here, guys. I got no heat. Just unplug her and plug her back in. No, I didn't do it. Because I'm unplugging the wrong thing. All right, we'll get this figured out yet. There we go. We're back in action. We got heat again. No sense pressing if you got no heat. Well, it was warm, but not hot. Still got it pretty flat, though, for no heat, hey? All right, and last one, we're going to uh, press towards the maroon block again. Now, I have done different things over the years when I am creating quilts and sometimes I don't bother pressing until the end and I have to admit it really is better to press as you go. You're just going to get better results. Everything is going to be more precise, more crisp and it just works out better. So I do highly recommend pressing as you go. All right, this is looking fantastic. Now I'm going to put this top row right sides together with my middle row, and I am going to pin that seam. You can see there, this seam on the bottom is uh, aiming towards the left, and my seam on the top is aiming towards the right. I'm going to pin that in place. And we'll do that again with the second seam here. They are alternating and they just 
nest together so nicely. Wow, Marge says she's loving this pattern and she's already got it up on her design wall. I am impressed. No fooling around, she's getting the job done. This is a quick one too, you guys. It looks complex, it looks tricky. We had a couple of people say, mm, I don't think I wanna do that one, but really nine patches are so simple. If you just make sure that you're uh, arranging your blocks in the correct way, you will be just fine. All right, I've got my seams facing up and I'm going to sew. Looks like it was my machine I unplugged. Sew this up with my uh, scant quarter inch. There we go. <laughs> Shannon. There's been a reminder to take your meds. <laughs> I suspect that comment was left in the wrong place. A couple of weeks ago, someone left a comment on one of our posts and it was a recipe and I can't find it now. I wanted to try it. I can't even remember what it was for, but it sounded really good at the time the funny thing about Facebook if you're not careful be commenting crazy stuff in the wrong places all right keep these pins handy I'm gonna need them again in a second for the next row Ooh, do I ever use spray starch? Not very often. The one time that I pre-washed my fabrics, I used spray starch because when fabrics are brand new, they are treated with sizing, which makes them really nice and stiff and very cooperative. And I like that about brand new fabrics, so I never ever pre-wash except for once. I don't like to use starch because what happens is um, starch wets the fabric and then when I apply the iron it heats the fabric and that causes shrinkage and then my blocks don't end up being the size I want them to be so I don't use any starch or steam unless I absolutely need it and that's just my personal preference if you've pre-washed your fabrics then you're perfectly fine I, I would recommend starch if you have pre-washed your fabrics Oh, Sandra's asking what a scant quarter inch is. That's a really great question, Sandra. Let me see if I can try and explain here with the seam I've just sewn. So, okay. We always use a quarter inch seam when we are making quilts and that just means where the stitching line is in relation to the raw edge of the fabric. So this from the raw edge to where my seam allowance is should be a quarter of an inch. But what happens is when we open up our fabric, the thread itself takes up a little bit of space in this fold. Then that ends up being more than a quarter of an inch. And our block ends up being smaller than it's supposed to be. So instead of doing an exact quarter inch here, I sew a hair less than a quarter of an inch, and we quilters call that a scant quarter inch. It's actually a quarter inch less a hair or a thread, but that is what that is called. And that allows us to then open up and account for the thickness of the thread in the seam allowance, and hopefully allows us to have the precise measurement of block that we were aiming to accomplish. I hope that makes sense. All right. We are now ready to put this right sides facing with this. And again, we're gonna pin those seams. But this time, let's see. Last time I sewed from left to right. So this time, oh, okay. So if you are having any weird effects with the audio, if there's echoing, you might have two browser windows open or two tabs open and you might be experiencing an echo between those two windows. Try and close one of them. If something still persists, then I recommend uh, reloading the window that you're watching in. 
This time I want to sew in this direction. So I'm going to put this one right sides facing on top of the larger. And I will pin from this side so that I can start my sewing up here. Again, that's going to avoid any um, bowing in my blocks. It'll help keep things nice and square because I'm alternating the direction of my stitching. Now, is there anybody that's just joined us? Are you just uh, finding us here on Facebook with our live stream? If so, welcome. You can find the pattern that we're working on at uh, sparrowquiltco.com. And it is called Undone. You're just going to click on the banner at the top of the page. That'll take you to a new page where you can input your email address. We will reply with an email with the pattern attached so that you can make your own uh, Undone quilt. If you're interested in the kit to make it just like the one you see here, we have those at sparrowquiltco.com. And eventually we'll have these ones, these kits, on the website as well. We got loads of tutorial videos there uh, under the Stash Busters tab, and you can also find us on YouTube. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss anything that we are up to. If you like your tutorials short and sweet, make sure you check out our Quilt Block Studio tutorials on YouTube. A lot quicker, a lot more to the point, less chatting, but no giveaways. So you miss out on that fun. And speaking of giveaways, hopefully you've already shared this video so that you can qualify for one of our little bobbin holders there. You can see how I cleaned out my drawer the other day. Put all my bobbins in that little ring instead of letting them roll around in the drawer. There we go. And I have to admit, I do love me some pre-wound bobbins. I am not a fan of winding bobbins. I think it's probably been several years since I wound one. It's just so convenient to pull a bobbin out of there and just get busy. All right. Our block is now complete. So I definitely have to press this and then I can show you the next step where we're gonna slice it once more, which will make it the double disappearing nine patch. So let's go ahead and press these seams. Just looking at the back here, I can see that they wanna go to the outside. So I'm gonna press them in that direction. When I took my first quilting class, my teacher taught me to, if there was no directions in the pattern, to press your seams in the direction they seemed to want to go. And so I've always just kept that rule in the back of my head whenever I'm uncertain. Oh. So Matt just said as well, don't forget to press towards the dark side. If you've got a light fabric next to a dark fabric, then of course it's always better to press towards that darker fabric. Because you're going to see the seams under the lighter fabric. And sometimes you can't avoid that, and that's okay. It's not the end of the world. It's just a quilt. No lives are at stake. And you've heard me say it before. You'll hear me say it again. It's your quilt. It's your fabric. You bought it. Do what you want. Do what you want with your quilts. You're the one that has to live with it, right? Or just give it away. <laughs> if you don't love it, just get rid of it. All right. There it is. Ah, well, that's okay, too. So Matt's sharing questions with me here, and I'm just replying, and no one has any idea what I'm talking about. Was it Juanita you said, Matt? Anita says that she presses all her seams open, and that is okay, too. That really reduces the bulk in the seams. It makes everything lay nice and flat. I don't get that um, nesting effect 
that I'm after. See how this one presses that way and this one presses that way. If it was open, um, I wouldn't be able to nest those seams that same way. All right. This is a big one. Let's see how big this block finishes at. 19 and three quarters. Once you have this entire block together, we are now ready to uh, slice up the center and then slice uh, sideways. This time I'm gonna have to turn everything uh, and slice it because my cutting mat isn't quite big enough to do the horizontal cut, but that's okay. We will just do one at a time here. So let's see how wide our center is. It should be six and a half and it is, bang on. So my halfway point is gonna be three and a quarter. So let's find three and a quarter. And I wanna line up three and a quarter with this vertical seam here. That looks really good. Now I also like to find a horizontal seam and line it up as well to make sure that I am nice and square. And there I can see it's good. Here it's good. Three and a quarter, three and a quarter. Have you ever heard that tip to measure twice and cut once? There's a lot less regret when you measure twice and only cut once. All right, here we go. So now I have two halves and I'm just going to slice them this way now. So I'm gonna use the lines on my cutting mat to help me stay square. So my bottom edge is lined up here, my left edge is lined up there. And then I'll bring this one over and get it as square as possible as well. I definitely wanna make sure that my seams are lined up there. Okay, so again, we're gonna line up our three and a quarter line with this vertical seam. Being very careful, making sure it's done right before I go ahead and cut that fabric. And there's my horizontal lined up nicely there as well. Okay. I'm gonna hold this in place really tight so it doesn't shuffle anywhere. There we go. All right, so now I have four blocks that I will be using in my quilt. And you can see how that looks really tricky, but it was actually quite easy, wasn't it? Super, super simple. So we are gonna continue sewing these until we have Let's refer to the pattern. All together, we're gonna need 40 of these units. So, so far, I have the four that Sheila already pieced, four more that I've just done, and I have a couple more bits and pieces. So I've got one more that is in this uh, state and is just ready to be cut into four. So I'm gonna show you that again, being as I have that all ready to go. And for some reason, I just need these all to be laid out the same. Bit of a control issue there, maybe. Okay. So here's one that I pieced last night. 
and I'm just going to do the cutting portion again. In case you didn't quite catch it that first time. Now, if you're just joining us, you can watch uh, the video from Friday where we cut out all our squares. But you will not find a video one, okay? We had to get rid of video one. It was terrible. The sound was not good. So we just ditched that video one. So if you are looking back for the prior videos on this series, you're going to look for video number two. All right? Hopefully that'll stop you from looking all over the place. Now this center block is six and a half inches wide. To cut it down the center, that means I need to line up the three and the quarter mark along the left-hand side of the block. So I've lined that up on the vertical and on the horizontal, I am making sure that my horizontal lines are square to my vertical lines. And I'm going to go ahead and cut down the middle. Uh, so Laura and Chris say they're just worried about the cutting on this quilt. And I understand. Just take your time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm killing Matt with how slow I am over here. He's a get things done kind of guy. Just take your time, guys. Really take my advice to heart. Measure twice, cut once. And if it doesn't go as planned, it's just fabric. It's just fabric. And I'll bet you anything, you've got more. I know I do. That's why we're using up our scraps, because... Using up our stash. Don't go out and spend a fortune on this, okay? Use up what you've got. All right, so I've now turned this 90 degrees, and I'm now going to cut up the center of this block. We're going to line up that three and a quarter inch line down the left-hand side. And that looks really good. And then check that horizontal seam as well. There we go. All right. So now I got four more that I can add to my pile. We are making some progress here. All right. So let's lay out another nine patch and start from the beginning again. We're going to put a black in the center. And your outer four corners are going to be your bright red. This is almost a tomato-y red. Good. And now we need dark gray in all the leftover spaces. Set these aside. So Laura is commenting on how her points don't seem to line up. And Laura, I can totally relate to that. And that is why I continue to use my pins. I began quilting in 2006. So about 12 years of quilting. And I still really, really find that I rely on my pins. And I'm not sure if that's something I'll ever get away from. Um, when my mother learned that I sewed over my pins, she really gave me heck. And she said that her mother, my granny, would never, ever, ever allow that. And that's fine, too. If you are more comfortable not sewing over your pins, that's fine. But when I pull them out at the last second things shift and my points just don't line up. So when I am coming up to a pin, 
I just slow right down and I call it walking over the pin and it's just one stitch at a time, just really nice and slow. If you're full out speed sewing over pins, something is going to connect with a pin at some point in time. And at that high speed, you know, that uh, impact is going to force your needle to fly through the air and... <clears throat> It could land in your eye. It could injure you in some way, shape, or form. So slow down. If you're going to sew over your pins, just slow right down and just do it nice and slowly. But I, I promise you it will give you better results. All right. Now we're going to put these squares on the right, right sides together with our middle block. And we're going to sew those together. So this time I'm going to sew from the top down. And then when I bring it back over, and this is already a sewn unit, I'll bring this one over on top and I will sew from this direction. I want to alternate the direction of my stitching in order to keep things nice and square. If I do all my sewing in the same direction, it's going to cause my seams to start to bow, and I'm going to get this kind of curvy look to my sewing, which I don't really want. You may not notice it as much in five inch blocks, but you would really notice it if you were stitching strips together. It just happens and everything starts to look like an hourglass. So I want you to sew one seam up and the next seam down, up, down, and you're going to alternate the direction of your stitching in order to keep things nice and square. I hope that makes sense. If not, please leave me a comment under the video and we will do our best to get back and answer your questions. All right. So we're nearing the end of the show. We got about 20 minutes left. I want you to take this last opportunity to share the video so that you can win one of these little bobbin holders and, um, that will help you keep organized. It just, uh, like I said earlier, it made my little day to clean out my messy little drawer and get all my bobbins into a nice uh, organized ring there. I find that sewing is very messy. And you know, all the leftover bits and pieces, it just all starts to accumulate. So anything that we can do to keep ourselves more tidy and organized is always a good thing. I, um, anytime I make a project and I've got the leftover bits and pieces, I keep those fabrics in one spot. And then I've got my precious glass front cupboard over here. I know I'm always talking about it and pointing over there. Um, and that's where my, untouched brand new stuff is so the kids are allowed to root through the bin of um, scraps and whatnot I'm not sure if you know this already but we have 10 children we got five boys and five girls and yes we are mother and father of all 10 and um, every once in a while they just get the urge to sew and um, that is their safe bin. They are allowed to go through mum's scraps and take whatever they want. They are not allowed in the glass front cupboard. That is mine, mine, mine. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> so stingy with those beautiful fabrics. But that's why I try to share the scraps. A picture came up on Facebook. You know how Facebook shares memories that you um, had posted several years prior one picture of our son Tash. He is um, number six in the ranks. And I had that picture had to be from about two or three years ago. And it was him sewing a pillowcase. And he was so small and so cute. And uh, he's still using that pillowcase. He's still proud of it and loves it. So, yeah, even the boys will sew here and there. Some of you may have seen Gage, our oldest boy. He works at the shop in the shipping department. Probably five or six years ago, he got the urge to make a wallet. But he didn't want any instructions, so he had to do it all on his own. And uh, mm, the finished size of the quilt, Barbara, wants to know, is 68 by 75. So it's a good size. Not quite a twin, but very close. You could probably use it on a twin size bed. Definitely a generous throw or a lap quilt. 
All right, so I have now put these all, I've taken that third block, put it right sides together with the other two, and this time I'm going to sew in this direction. And this is part of the reason that I just do one block at a time and then lay everything back out. Helps me stay organized, uh, especially when alternating the directions. I find that's really where I start to get mixed up. So if I lay everything back out each time, then I know I'm staying on track. And it makes me slow as molasses. Drives my husband a little bit crazy. <laughs> Matt says, the question is, do I want more kids? No, I am done having children, but I am very open and excited to see some grandbabies come along. We uh, fixed the leak. So there will be no more babies passing through this body. Although, yes, I did deliver all 10 of those children myself. And our uh, oldest is 17 years older than our youngest. All right, so this is my last seam in that last row. And we'll just lay these back out. Now, if you missed it earlier, I am going to press these all towards the dark gray fabrics. So in this row, my pressing will be to the dark gray. In my center row, my pressing will be out towards the dark gray. And again, this row, just like the top, I'll press them to the center towards that dark gray fabric. And that allows my seams to alternate directions so that they all fit together really, really nicely. Because that's my favorite, is when things fit together nicely. I don't know if you can see my ironing board, but holy, I'm a mess over here. This iron just isn't as fancy as the one I've got at work, though. My Oliso with those little legs. Gosh, that iron is fun. Sheila was telling me how she went home, and her iron at home is a regular iron, and so she was counting on it to raise up on those little legs, and it didn't. So she scorched the top of her ironing uh, bored a little bit and uh, now she's going to be a lot more careful I think I might have to give Sheila an iron for Christmas that's a ways off all right that one is good to go now see how nice that lays once you press it it really is worth it to do the pressing So if you wanted to, you could just go through and make all your nine patches and then do all your cutting and then make that second nine patch. And you could just kind of have yourself a little system there. Ah, So Kimberly is asking what sort of sewing machine I'm using. Today I'm stitching on the Ever Sewn Sparrow 25. And... Um, this is a newer brand of machine. It is a uh, very nice, affordable, lightweight type of machine. Not too fancy, but it just has everything you need. Your needle up down, your adjustable sewing speed, lots of different stitches. The Sparrow 25, I think it even comes with a little alphabet. Yep, it does. So you could even make your quilt labels with it. It's a great little machine. When we first got these, last year, late last year, uh, the first job I did was bind a queen size quilt by machine and it sewed through that like a champ. It's not an easy job. I don't hand stitch it on the back. I turn it around and stitch it by machine. And like I said, it just powered right through that. So I'm pretty impressed with these little ever sewn machines. They are just a nice weight. They'd be great for a beginner or as your second machine for classes or whatnot. Even as your first machine, it would be more than adequate. All right, now we're going to place this row right sides together with the middle row. And I'm gonna pin those intersections in place. Don't forget that we have got those uh, tutorials on YouTube 
where we cover just the block itself. It's very simple, straightforward, right to the point. Um, so if you want a quicker tutorial, that is what you should check out. Hi, Suzanne Pons. Suzanne is from France, everybody. And that's Amelie. Thanks for joining in today, Suzanne. Nice to hear from you. We met Suzanne a few years ago in Houston while we were there working at the quilt show. She is an APQS dealer over in Europe. All right, so now I am ready to sew this, these two rows together. And I'm coming up to my pin, so I'm just going to take my time. Okay. And there comes another pin. Don't forget to straighten those corners. Make sure you end as nicely as you began. Trim up those threads. Keep these pins handy for a second here. All right. Now, remember how I was talking about the alternating directions of sewing? This time I sewed from that direction. This time I'm going to sew from this direction. Pin these in place. Now hopefully you've been watching all along, but if you've just stumbled upon us, we are just finishing up today's version of the Stash Busters series. This is a uh, series of quilt patterns and tutorials that is dedicated to helping you use up your stash and use what you've got on hand. We have done, this is the third quilt in our series, but we stream live here on Facebook Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 10.30 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And if you want to check out our prior videos, make sure you uh, check us out at our Stash Busters section at SparrowQuiltCo.com. Sparrow you can also find us on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to our channel there on YouTube so that you don't miss any of our antics. And I hope that if you're making any of our quilt patterns at all, that you will email us a picture or send it to us on Facebook. We love to see your version of our quilts. I was talking earlier about one of our watchers named Terry, and she whipped up the houndstooth pattern this past weekend. She made it all her own. So watch the Facebook page for that a little bit later. Um, we are always wanting to share our um, viewers' quilts so that everybody can see them and be inspired. That's the whole idea here is to inspire people to create beautiful things. All right, I've got that one done and I am gonna go ahead and press those seams towards the outside. Geez, even this nine patch block just by itself would be a nice quilt. Kind of a plus block. I'm tempted to do this again in blue and get a blue plaid. Maybe even green. Matt's wearing a blue and green plaid shirt today. Maybe we could do that next. All right, so there's one more nine patch ready to be cut up. So I will show you how to cut this. 
And then when we join again on Wednesday, we will move on to the light colored blocks and we will be piecing. I will show you quickly. I got all four here. So the light colors, set this aside for a moment. You're going to see it as soon as I lay it out. Once I put these back together, it was like a light turned on for me. I finally figured out how it all works. That makes sense? Now that you see it all together? So these will be the blocks that we work on on Wednesday. And then some of them we're going to have to cut on the diagonal as well. So maybe I should stop cutting them all like that. I'm going to have to read ahead in my pattern just a little bit more. Maybe I won't cut that up. Maybe we'll just piece one more regular nine patch just in case. I don't want to get ahead of myself and get into trouble. And then I got to re-piece things. All right, let's do one more nine patch before we go. And we're almost ready to choose a winner. So hopefully you've all shared this video so that you can be entered in the draw to win one of those little bobbin keepers. These reds in our outer corners. Come on now. Is it bad when you talk to inanimate objects expecting them to behave for you? <laughs> and we'll put our dark gray in all the remaining open spots. Just like that. All right. So you're going to flip these so that they're right sides together on the square beside it. And then we'll piece these. I am really, really looking forward to seeing these quilts get finished. Um, Matt had suggested that the first person who submits a picture of their finished undone quilt is going to get free machine quilting. At the shop, we offer machine quilting services and we also offer long arm quilting rentals so you could come in and learn to use the machines yourself. For those of you that are not local, that's not really an option, but you're more than welcome to ship your quilts to us. And we've even got a promotion going right now where if you submit three quilts, you're going to save 20%. That is a good amount of money and you will have your quilts finished. It's not a quilt till it's finished. Just not as warm when it's just a flimsy little top. I always joke that the binding is optional, but it's not a quilt till it's bound, I guess. All these rules. Okay, Matt's choosing a winner for us. Congratulations to Donna Melvin. Donna, would you please send us a private message, not here on the video, don't send us your info here, send us a private message in the inbox and include your shipping address, your email address and your phone number and we will get one of these little bobbin holders out to you. And Donna, please include whether you'd like blue or green, it's like a spring green, nice and bright. Okay, congratulations Donna. You are one step closer to organization. All right. Now we're going to sew these last ones on. Good. And this time I'm going to sew up this direction. We got a couple minutes left, so I'm going to keep going. And I hope you will join us again on Wednesday so that you can see us start on the next portion on the light colored nine patch blocks. And don't worry, if you cannot catch us live, this video gets captured while we stream it and it will be on Facebook later. It will also be on YouTube and you can also find it at the website at sparrowquiltco.com.
I know for a lot of quilters, they have to work a day job. That darn work just gets in the way of all the fun. But you got to afford this hobby somehow, right? So watch the videos later if you can. And join in on the fun. Okay. Trim that too. And then we'll better press these before I stitch them together. So again, we're going to stitch towards the dark gray. In this row, it'll be towards the center. In this row, we'll be piece, or pushing those seams towards the outer blocks. And here again, we'll be pressing towards the center. And don't forget, and tell all your friends, you get your undone quilt finished first, you can win machine quilting. I know that's the part that... Uh, gets to you a little, makes your eye twitch. I was working on a baby quilt, machine quilting it, and not on the Millie behind me. I was um, domestic quilting on an Eversewn machine, and it takes some dedication and persistence. I'll tell you, there was a couple moments there where I was ready to be done. But it needs to be finished, so i got to stick with it. I can probably do that on one of my videos. Take questions while we finish quilting that quilt. Hopefully give you some advice. And as always, we'd love to hear your suggestions for tutorials or uh, videos that you'd like to see. Feel free to leave us a comment there. Ooh, Matt is... Um, reminding me to tell you that we are going to be building a glossary of quilting. So like from step one all the way to completion, we are going to try and do videos on every little step, how to cut things out, uh, just everything along the whole way. So look forward to that. That is another thing that we will be doing in the coming weeks. All right, this one. Laura's wondering about fork pins. Oh, I see. Okay, so Laura, you can find them on the website at sparrowquiltco.com. Uh, Matt's going to post the link for you right now. I can't live without them. I highly recommend you use them. They will improve your sewing. They will for sure. Well, that brings us up till noon, you guys. I'm really grateful that you have joined me today. I hope we'll see you again on Wednesday. I'm also going to be streaming on Friday. And uh, we will get this quilt finished up. And uh, then hopefully next week we can start something new. So join me again on Wednesday. If you cannot join me live, then just don't worry. The videos will be there later. And con congratulations to Donna. What's that? <laughs> For winning the bobbin keeper. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on Wednesday, and bye for now.